Hello there, my name is Ron Muir. And my name is Bryant Ravel. And, and we, we are, are your hosts, hosts for ChemBusters. On today's episode, we will be diving into the chemistry of opioid analgesics, otherwise known as morphine and its derivatives, codeine, heroin, and the less known as morphine. It is without a doubt that these molecules have changed the world and reshaped modern medicine. We will today explore the societal connotations involved with the medicinal and recreational uses of these molecules and how the role of the government shapes the understandings of societal views. But before we dive into the chemistry, let's look at the common views and perceptions that our society has towards these molecules. Thanks Ron, I'm here at UCSD to talk to some students and ask them what they think about opioids. What do you think what about morphine? Yeah. Um, I don't like well, that. I know it's used in hospitals for um, pain medication. Right? Would you take it if a doctor prescribed it to you? I mean, if I'm in enough pain, then yes, I would. <laughs> so have you heard about diamorphine? No, I haven't. Okay, so it's a drug prescribed in the UK for pain relief and things like that. Um, so what if a doctor prescribed heroin to you? Would you take that? Obviously not. Everybody knows how dangerous heroin is. Okay, well, what about diamorphine? If it's used in hospitals and a doctor prescribes it, then definitely, yeah. Okay, now what if I told you that diamorphine is heroin? I don't know, that seems sketchy. Thanks, Willis. It's really interesting that heroin and dimorphine are essentially the same molecule and is used in the UK for medicinal purposes. I wonder what a doctor has to say about that. Today I'm with distinguished Dr. Bryant Lim. Thank you for taking the time to interview with us today. Uh, we're talking today about opiates and their use in the medical field, and I'm just wondering if you could elaborate a little bit on how you see them used in the hospital. Okay, well, few pharmaceutical drugs have impacted society in the way that morphine has. It's used in a wide variety of treatments, ranging from chronic to acute pain. It's used in childbirth, cancer treatment, and even war. So how do you think these societal perceptions affect the way that the government is regulating the way that these drugs are basically produced and sold and prescribed? Well, in the UK, heroin is called diamorphine, and it's actually legal there. It's used for prescribed treatment of pain. Because um, most of the time when you hear about heroin, it's like associated with lots of infectious diseases like HIV and AIDS. But really, is that associated with the drug itself, or is it the conditions that it's being used in? It's mainly just the conditions. That's really interesting. Back to you, Ron. It's interesting how the government can regulate the role of morphine and its derivatives, given the fact that those molecules are so similar in structure. Mm. Let's take a look at the chemistry that surrounds those molecules. Hi, my name is Levi Palapalo, PhD chemist here at UC San Diego. Today we're going to be looking at morphine and its derivatives, but first, we're going to look at a technique utilized by medicinal chemists both in academia and in industry to identify new pharmaceutical compounds. This technique is known as Structure Activity Relationship Studies, or SAR studies. SAR studies links the 3D structure of a molecule with its bioactivity, which is later studied to produce other compounds of similar activities. In order for this to happen, we must identify a target or a macromolecule within an organism that elicits a particular response, which is later then assayed through various means. This is a reiterative process that allows us to gain insight to what's known as a pharmacophore, which is the essential backbone and the very simple molecule that produces a similar response as to its general class of molecules. A pharmacophore for morphine has been shown to be simply this benzene ring, quaternary carbon, two bridging carbons, and a tertiary amine. SAR studies are very important for identifying the pharmacophore, but it's also very important for us to tune the pharmacokinetics of our specific pharmaceutical. For example, the isolated forms found at the phenyl group, as well as the 6-hydroxy group, allows heroin to be taken up through the blood-brain barrier and metabolizing in the brain. This causes the drug to be very, very potent and very, very addictive. As a result, our society has deemed this drug to be very, very dangerous to the consumer. Wow, that PhD chemist knew what he was talking about. I feel like that doctor had his stuff down too. Yeah. It's really interesting how the government can really shape society and how we can view chemistry. 
And you know what? It's actually really interesting how society actually influences chemistry and government. It's almost like they're related. My name is Ron Muir. And I'm Brian Travell. And we are your hosts for Chembusters. Have a great day. <laughs>